There are certain organs within the body that are seeming to absorb microplastics more than other organs. Now, full disclosure, they absorb into literally all tissues. We're seeing them everywhere, but why they have an affinity for certain organs and certain parts of organs, we don't really know yet, but we have the data to at least see what those organs are. And then after that, I'll talk about some brief ways that we know at least now in the preliminary research to be able to reduce the absorption of microplastics and possibly even encourage sort of the elimination of them, so to speak. And if you don't mind, drop a quick comment down below for the algorithm. It helps us out a ton. It gets the video served out to more people because there's more engagement on the video. So go ahead and do that. And also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I put a link down below for $25 off Manukora Manuka Honey. I am a fan of honey, and the nice stuff about this honey is that you only need one or two teaspoons per day. So we're not talking a huge carb content. We're talking about the antioxidant, the antimicrobial, the overall benefits of honey because it's so concentrated in Manuka honey. But Manukora is unique because they actually screen their honey. Okay, They not only measure their MGO content, but they make sure that it's the quality that they promise. And it's harvested in the remote forests of New Zealand, which is where Manuka honey is supposed to be harvested. And you see all kinds of just an off brands of stuff, but Manukora really does it right. Now that link down below gets you $25 off the Manukora starter kit, which gives you an 850 MGO bottle of Manuka honey, but it also gives you five travel packs, little stick packs, and also a wooden spoon and a guide on how to use it. So that link is manukora.com slash delour20. So manukora.com slash delour20. I promise you it's the best honey you will ever have. The flavor is out of this world as well. So there was a study published in Nature Medicine just recently in 2025, and it found that the brain is one of the most attractive organs for microplastics. Now we're gonna talk about other organs too, but this was particularly interesting. They found that these micro and nano particles, these micro nanoplastics, had gotten into the cerebrovasculature of the brain and the immune cells of the brain predominantly. So they found them in all areas of the brain, but they seem to really congregate in the cerebrovasculature. So in the actual blood vessels and the vasculature of the brain, but also in the immune cells. Now, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Are the immune cells potentially having a response to the microplastics and they're congregating in that area? But it seems like the microglia, which is sort of the immune system of the brain, potentially comes under attack from microplastics, which could put us at risk for Alzheimer's, for other neurodegenerative conditions. So we're dealing with a lot here with the brain, especially considering that there's a blood-brain barrier protecting the brain and these nanoplastics are so small that they're able to get through. How is this impacting the brain? We don't entirely know, but most of the type of plastic that was in there was polyethylene. Whereas when you look at the other organs, you see polyethylene, but you also see polyvinyl chloride and some of these other plastics. It's frightening because this is an area that's a little bit harder to sort of flush. Now I'll give you real quick how we can potentially potentially flush the brain. One of the only ways that we can flush and get movement through the brain is through what's called the glymphatic system. The glymphatic system is sort of literal brainwashing. It usually happens more at night. It's where we have cerebral spinal fluid that comes up and because of intracranial pressure, sort of circulates and flushes metabolites out of the brain, much like the lymphatic system through the rest of our body. So the glymphatic system can be initiated a little bit more through high heat sauna because it can pressure, kind of create this pressure gradient, intracranial pressure. So that's one way to do it. Uh, let's talk about some of the other organs here though. There was a recent study that took a look at 304 people that had uh, were at risk for asymptomatic where they had asymptomatic carotid artery disease. So they're having um, like plaque buildup. So they looked at their cardiovascular system and they found that 60% of people in this study had polyethylene in their actual plaque that was forming. Okay, 12% had PVC in their plaque. And those that had more plastics ended up having significantly higher risk for heart attack and stroke. So now we're seeing it in the literal plaque. So our plaque is no longer just foam cells and these immune cells. It's now comprised of plastic too. So we have it in our heart. We have it in the areas surrounding our heart and the vasculature. 
Okay, what about some of the other organs? The lungs, we're now seeing it have a strong affinity for the lungs. There is a study published in Cancer Epidemiology, Biomarkers and Prevention. And they took a look at people that had uh, some tumors removed. So they already like were having lung issues. And in these samples, when they were looking at their lungs, they found significant microplastics. So much so that out of 114 specimens, 87% had microplastics. So the lungs, that's an area where we're probably getting it from the air, less so from the blood, but I'm sure the blood could be bringing some there as well, because it's not all about airborne with the lungs. Anyhow, moving on, what about other areas? There was a study published in Toxological Sciences that looked at humans and dogs and found that microplastics in the testes were incredibly prevalent. In this case, they tested for 12 types of microplastics and nanoplastics, and Every single test subject, human and canine, had significant microplastics in their testes, which has tremendous negative implications because this could pass on downstream to, well, no pun intended, to offspring, right? So what do we do about this? What are the potential ways that we can flush it? And I'm gonna keep this brief because I've done other videos on this. So one of the main things that we could do since we know that this ends up in all tissues, there's a study published in the International Journal of Pharmaceuticals that found that it's absorbed just like food, nanoplastics through the gut, ultimately into the bloodstream and into all tissues. So independent of how we can kind of reduce absorption, how it can potentially flush is get as hydrated as possible. There's evidence that suggests that hydration does improve lymphatic movement. So we used to think that lymph, the lymph fluid would only move with actual physical body movement, but now we see that drinking water actually increases the lymph more. So this is one way that we can move it out of tissues a little bit more. So we have to drink water and move our body, right? The lymphatic system does not have a heart, it doesn't pump. It requires movement to pump. So you can't be stagnant and you have to hydrate, okay? That's the best possible chance we have at clearing it from the physical body. But when we look at the gut, we know that microplastics are excreted through the stool, which means that if we conceal the gut lining better, we have less chance of absorbing some of these plastics in the first place. Doesn't get rid of everything that's in the tissues. The best way to do that is movement and water and probably sauna, quite frankly. But when it comes to the gut, consuming collagen, consuming glutamine, consuming bone broth, avoiding emulsifiers. Soluble fiber can actually bind to bile acids and bile acids can actually sequester microplastics and other fat soluble toxins. So that's a great way, small amounts of soluble fiber to kind of help flush things out. We cannot promise anybody that we're gonna get rid of microplastics, but what we can do is decrease the amount that is absorbed and of course do everything we can to get the other ones out of our tissues. So I'm a firm believer that movement Sweating, hydration, and gut health are probably our best chances. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.